Well, hello again. Today we're going to pick up where we left off in the last video with our uh, brake booster here, vacuum booster, whatever you want to call it, and power booster. There's all kinds of names for it, I guess. And uh, I've moved it inside uh, on my electronic workbench here because it's too cold out in the garage and too cold outside. I've got the heat on, nice and warm in here. And uh, what we're going to do basically is we're just going to go ahead and open it up. And uh, I don't think there's going to be a whole lot of hope for it. But, uh, you know, these things here run at least $250 for one that's rebuilt. And you have to send the old one in, and then they rebuild it and send it back. You have to send in the core because there's not that many of them uh, left anymore, really. And uh, so what I'm going to do, now this is a band that goes all the way around this thing. And it's squeezed together with this long, rusty screw. I'm not going to worry about that. It's an actual screw. It has a flat tip uh, on one end. I'll be putting a brand new one of these in there and I'm not going to sit here and struggle trying to get that thing unthreaded all the way off. I'm just going to take the old Moto tool. We're just going to cut through that baby right there and eliminate that screw and see if we can't pull the band off and then see what happens. However, you know, I've already scoped out a couple of things on here, or at least one thing anyway. This uh, thing right here is part of the rubber boot that's on the inside here and it peels back and it will peel down in this, it'll be pushed down in the center once we separate these two halves. Uh, I don't think there's, if there's any fluid in here, we've got a real problem, but there's a seal on the rear, back here, and uh, there's several things on the inside, and there's a big round thing with a rubber seal all the way around it, and uh, who knows what else. So I'll tell you what, let's just get started. All right, we're all the way through. Now I'll take a pair of pliers and see if I can, uh, well, this half, this half comes loose. Look at there. Well, that's half of it. I don't know if the other one, the other one's just kind of wedged in by rust. And there we go. All right, she came out. All right, now if I can just separate that. I don't know, it's gonna take a couple of hands. Well, let's see what happens here. I've got it slightly loose here. As you can see, it's going to take going to take a lot of work to work my way around this thing all the way on both sides. I don't want to damage this ring. Uh, there uh, are two types associated with this. Uh, one is the ring type that you know, had the screw like you just saw, and the other one just sort of snaps together. So I guess they call it the snap type. I can't. There's a name for it: clip type, snap type, and you know the two halves snap together. So with a rubber, some kind of a rubber seal between them so you won't have any vacuum leaks. Well, let me keep at it. I'm going to be very careful to pry it loose all the way around. I'm going to take my time until I can hopefully slip it back this way. I hope to slip it back this way because there's less distance to go. Well, guess what? There is apparently a rubber seal that fits up inside this thing. And here it is right here. You got to keep this thing uh, from having a vacuum leak out of it, so that's the way they did it. So I think this is, it, it appears that this rubber thing and this below it, I don't know if it's mounted on a metal band or not. Well, we'll keep working, we'll find out. Well, we're getting there, slow but sure. I'm just kind of prying it up a little bit as we go. You can get a kind of a better idea of that rubber seal now underneath that thing. It doesn't look like to be in bad shape. Well, she's about to pop off, I think. And that probably at the last second. Oh, there we go. She popped right off. There we go. The band is down. If I get lucky enough to actually separate these two halves, now that I have the band off, uh, I'll want to be able to put it back in if it's rebuildable or, or cleanable and, you know, you know, functionable. And uh, I think what I better do is just put a mark on this half and this half so I know you know where it was on originally so I'm going to do that with my motor tool I'm just going to put a little line down in the metal and a little line down in the metal about that long so to line up those two not real deep I don't want to go all the way through that's for sure also uh, I need to take off these four bolts uh, those two or the two or the four nuts rather off the bolts there and off of there and then I want to pull out this uh, there's a cotter pin. Let me see here. 
Yeah, I want to take out, let me get this thing ship shape here. Here we go. I want to take out this cotter pin right here and uh, pull this loose so this thing here uh, and these four bolts out, these four nuts off, the whole thing will come right off in the bracket, this bracket, but the rest of it will sit over here. Well, there's our two alignment marks, one right there and one right there, and you'll notice that they're, you're, you know, they don't line up right now. Well, I'll tell you what, in the process of moving this thing around, I had my hand on this handle right here, the two halves began to spin separately from one another. Well, that's kind of cool. So, also on the back over here, on this other side, I went ahead and put a couple of marks also with the moto tool. Uh, I cut a groove right here and a small groove right here so I know which side goes where when it comes time to put it back together. All right, that's all done. Now this dog leg uh, faces downward uh, to the bottom of this thing right here. See, it looks like a little dog leg there. Now let's see if I can get it off. Well, she came off just as slick as a whistle. We'll just go ahead and set that aside. I went ahead and put that pin back in and uh, put, put straightened up the cotter pin, stuck it back in just enough to hold it. That's the pin that goes through the dog leg here. This thing here has had to lick. Man, alive. You can bet this is, I, I was thinking it came apart at one time. They may have taken it apart at one time, put it back together, but this is the original one. And uh, I think maybe we can go ahead and start separating the two halves now. I'll tell you what, if, if I... I'm sure that some of you Thunderbird owners out there are watching this intently, what I'm doing here. You know, I sure would be if one of you guys was doing it. <laughs> I'd be watching very closely what you're doing in case I ever had to do it myself. But, uh, you know, I don't plunge into this stuff blindly. You know, I always discuss it with, I either do a lot of research on it in advance, and, and even then we, I still discuss it with Brendan. Uh, he's very, very good at automotive work. He did it for years, used to race cars and all this crap, you know, and championship one year up in Detroit him and his buddy Norm yeah, in uh, stock car racing so they know what they're doing and I know quite a bit about what I'm doing but you know sometimes he'll you know he'll you know there's maybe like I, about this he said uh, there may be more to this uh, this is a Midland uh, brake booster and uh, he said there is maybe more to this than uh, meets the eye so you know my attitude was asked so what who cares let's tear it apart <laughs> Now these two halves are spinning independently of one another a little easier even yet so I think what I'm going to have to do now is I'm going to have to peel this rubber back shove it down inside because I think this is probably what's holding it. There's a it's almost like a bellows thing I think that runs it's about that big around I guess the short piece maybe about that long I don't know and it runs back to here somewhere inside the canister. Well, it doesn't matter, you know, one way or the other, this still has to go inside. We can't separate the halves with this thing outside holding it. So let's do that. All right, she's down inside. Now let's hope the two halves will separate. Oh, they're beginning to separate already. <laughs> Let me get a screwdriver and a bigger ball-peen hammer, maybe. One of our subscribers said, I need a bigger ball-peen hammer. <laughs> You know, you can't never satisfy these people. First, I didn't have a ball-peen hammer, and then I, everybody said, get a ball-peen hammer. So I went out and bought a ball-peen hammer, and now they're saying, well, you don't have a big, big enough ball-peen hammer. <laughs> Word of caution here, uh, you would be tempted to stick a screwdriver down there and start prying it apart. You know, be careful. That diaphragm is in there, and you don't, if it's good, you don't want to be poking holes through it. With your screwdriver now you're going to have to use something but kind of use a screwdriver like this instead of going down in there straight and it's not going to be easy this is a little rubber collar right here i'm not sure if i'm going to have to shove that one inside or not that's that baby there is pretty brittle i don't know i don't think i'm going to have to do that maybe i can take this and shove this whole thing forward i don't know i'm going to have to figure this one out Yes, yeah, she is coming loose. I just took my fingers on both sides, on this side and on that side, and separated it, and I could see that this, this uh, plastic deal is going back through the center. So I'm just going to keep working at it until the two actually come apart. All right, we have it fully separated, with the exception of this little dog leg. It doesn't want to quite go through that hole there because there's another rubber bushing there. Let me see if I can show you that. There's another rubber bushing right there. I'm going to have to get that bushing out of there. See it? 
once I get that bushing out, uh, this thing here will be able to slip through the hole. Now, I could force it. Uh, if I had a rebuild kit, which I cannot find, if I had a rebuild kit, I'd just go ahead and force it on through and not worry about it. But I'm going to take it easy, try to get that thing pushed through, I think, from this side inward. And that way, I should have the necessary space to clear the hole. I've determined that that little rubber bushing there is going to have to come out from the inside, so I'm going to take a little bit of silicone spray here. Not a little bit, I'm going to give it quite a bit. I'm going to spray it on both the inside and outside, which will help us uh, grease it up, get it out quicker. See there, we always make them bend to our will. All right, let's get this thing off of here. It should come right off now. Yes, it does. <laughs> Now this thing here, I think, is held on with a clip, and that means we're going. To, that means the clip is in here somewhere. That means we're going to have to get over to this side, which means there's a rubber barrier right here. I'll tell you what, this diaphragm looks to be in beautiful shape. I don't see any problems with that at all right now. Of course, you know it's all in the pressure check, not the eyeball check. <clears throat> that looks pretty darn nice, I think. Let me get some clarity here. This camera doesn't want to focus all the time. I apologize for that, guys. It's getting kind of old. I thought by now I'd have to replace it, but she's still going. So if this thing here is the barrier between here and here, and this is rubber here, that means this, uh, this thing must peel up or something. Let me see. Yes, it does. It does peel up. Look at there. Let me see if I can get both hands on. If I, if I peel that up, it might separate enough for me to look down there and find a pin or something. Maybe another cotter pin is holding this and this to the same place, I would imagine. Oh, well. We'll just see. It will bend to our will. Well, as expected, it does. It's, uh, there's a slot right here. And this lower lip right here fits down in that slot. Now what about that? All I gotta do now is continue peeling it up out of that slot all the way around. And then hope for the best. <laughs> well, I don't think this is starting to look too good, folks. Uh, you see all that shiny stuff right there? That's brake fluid, I believe. Brake fluid coming in from here somehow and getting into here. Not supposed to be brake fluid there. Well, guess what? There is no cotter pin or key down in there of any kind that's holding anything together. There's nothing there, just more of a shaft. I wish I could shine it on the light a little better to kind of give you an idea, but there's nothing there. So, what's holding this on? Let me eyeball it a little more. Well, it's another piece of cake. Look at here. What we have is a slot there and another slot on the other side, I think. Yeah, another slot on the other side that just happened to be the same shape. Come on, clear up here, girl. Get back up a little bit. It just happened to be the same shape as these plastic ears on this collar. So that means I'm going to have to hold this collar still and then spin this thing left or right until those uh, ears line up with the slots. And then it should come right off. And there she is, all lined up. Let me see, I should be able to lift it completely off now. I had to actually hang on to this with one hand and grab a hold of it, peel this back like that and get a hold of it like this and then spit counter, you know, go one way on one, one the other. And I used uh, some silicone, some silicone. Yep, I sprayed some silicone down in there to get it to, to slip a lot easier. And now she's loose as a goose, if I can get it on off of there. Come on, baby. There we go. And there it is. All right. Number two down. Now we got to keep playing with it and see what's next. Well, there's no keys or anything to separate these, you know, that are holding these two pieces together. So that means that this, uh, this metal plate slips up out of this, uh, well this whole thing must slip all the way up off this collar too. That's the only way it can be put together, you know? So let's try a screwdriver in here and see if they'll separate. Yeah, and yes they are. Look at that. Look at that. I'll tell you what, a little bit of logic here and there is all you need to make these things bend to your will. Not a problem. Okay, let me keep 
separating it around to see if I can't get this thing to slide off. Oh my goodness, look at all that brake fluid showing up down in there, all settled to the bottom because this was the bottom of, of the thing that was sitting on the bottom. There's not a whole lot there, but there's not supposed to be any. Apparently there's another rubber gasket right here that's somehow been allowing, apparently they had a bad, apparently they had a bad uh, master cylinder at one time that was allowing fluid to go in there and uh, it leaked down around in here. So. I don't know, this it ate up quite a bit. It's pretty eaten up. Yeah, let's finish tearing it apart. By the way, I went ahead and sprayed you know, a little bit of silicone down in there to help this thing get off. That's what helped me get it loose. So you ready for the big reveal? Let's do the big reveal. Come on, get off of there, baby. Yeah, come on, there we go. Oh, how about that? There's a strange gasket. How about them apples, huh? Never seen one with an edge like that. I'm not sure how that would seal. <laughs> oh, what do we got down in here? Ooh, we got lots of good stuff down in there. Look at that. Easily cleanable. And there's our check valve. That's that baby right there. Our next little obstacle is to get this plate off. And uh, as you can see, it's separated down in there. It's a separate plate from this part right here. And I've determined that it is screwed on and it needs to come off counterclockwise. How did I determine that? Well, I'm fixing to show you. If you look right here. See that butt right there? That butt right there? If you look at the other side, it's just a, a thin piece of metal. Now, if you go over on this side, you see another downward butt. I can hold this thing together. Hang on a second. Hang on a second, folks. I'll be there in a second if I can find out where it went. Where did she go? Ah, oh, there she is down in there. You'll see another butt. Uh, let me back up. Maybe I'm just a little too close. Yeah, there we go. There's the other butt right there. And it goes around to a sharp edge over here. So what they did was they screwed this plate on all the way around until that butt. And you can see the thread if you look pretty close. It's not a big thread, but you see how it sticks up here? Then it disappears down here. It's the same way on both sides. So I'm going to try to, I'm not exactly certain how I'm going to do this, but I'm going to try to rotate this rusty plate counterclockwise. And then I don't know if it's going to slide up over this rubber boot or not. We'll find out. Well, we were almost at a standstill until finally something popped here. This part here finally separated off of there. Well, there's one more piece to the puzzle. <laughs> God. I don't know. Now, this one still, I'm having a lot of problems with it. I can't seem to get this thing to unscrew. This plate's got to unscrew. But I think it's not unscrewing because it's very, very rusty down in this area here. And I don't want to damage it more than I already have. I, I was kind of tapping on it with a flat uh, punch right there and I was kind of bending up the lip of that thing and I didn't like that so I stopped but anyway let's soak her a little bit more it's getting kind of late at night here I really should be going in the house and getting in a shower I stink like uh, uh, PB or this liquid wrench I, I stink like this liquid wrench and uh, all kinds of crap here but <laughs> it's brake fluid let's keep working for a little while longer well, we still haven't got this plate off of this uh, plastic back here where it screws on down here, but we did have a little bit of luck. This thing here just came loose. Don't ask me why. I was tapping on it a little bit. Maybe uh, let's take a close look at that thing. I don't think there's any kind of a, no kind of a keeper on there or anything. I don't see any rubber gasket of any kind. It's got a little ring around the bottom, probably where it fits into a hole down in there. Well, one more piece to the puzzle. Stay with it. Well, wifey just called and said she needs me inside, so I guess it's time for a break anyway. But uh, when I come back out later, I may apply a little bit of light heat uh, along this edge right down in here like that, which will kind of make it... I don't want to melt this plastic, but at the same time, I have to have enough heat to release it. So that's going to be a real touchy situation. It's got to be, it's got to be loosened up. It just will not unscrew off of that plastic down in there. It's really on there tight. 
So, see you after I find out what wifey wants. Okay, we're back. Wifey wanted to remind me that I hadn't eaten all day. I forgot to eat today, isn't it? <laughs> I think I'm suffering from brain simers or something. But she was right. She had something for me to eat. And I am now all charged up and ready to go. We've got to get this thing off of here. And uh, I'm gonna, I can always use a, uh, a regular band, you know, uh, worm gear band to put that back on. So we're going to have to take this off. Then hopefully we can get the rest of this, this whole mess here unscrewed from that. It just will not come right now. All right, that's off. And uh, I discovered that this thing is loose here. I guess it just sits in there around that round thing right there. It's held in place by the lip, that first lip inside this thing right here. Once you slide it on, it goes around this edge right here and holds this thing in. I have no idea what it is, don't care. I just need to know where it goes back. It's kind of it's a rubber thing. So I'm gonna, I thought that was metal. That's just rubber. This rubber with metal thing sticking out of it like a little fan. How about that? <laughs> All right, let's see what we can do now about uh, getting the rest of this apart. We're almost done if I can be successful here. We're down to a snap ring now, and I've got my little snap ring, snap ring pliers I bought a while back. I bought a whole set of these little tiny ones somewhere, probably Harbor Freight. And uh, let's see what happens here. Well, they work. How about them apples, huh? All right, keep driving on. Now this thing here, the little foot thing, is attached to this thing right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and take my little I have a flat punch here. Stick it right down there and see if I can't tap that baby out. I may have to go back, you know, tap a little bit on this side, then go over this side, back and forth, back and forth to get that thing to come out of there. But I think we can do it if I'm real patient and I take my time. Well, our little dog paw thing came out of here, you know, hooks to the gas pedal, I mean, uh, the brake pedal inside the car. It was held down, but uh, held in there with a little plastic thing, a little plastic ring that went around it. They used plastic. Uh, I think, I really don't know why they use plastic. I guess it was just tougher than an O-ring. And it had a little uh, internal star washer in there. Not a big deal. It goes in, comes up, fastens to the uh, fastens to the brake pedal. I'll figure out a way to make it tighter. If it's not tighter, it doesn't matter. And uh, I think what we need to do right now, I think we're down about as far as we need to go. I can't get this plate off. I've heated it up with a heat gun along here and along here. So I think the best thing to do with this is just go ahead and put our snap ring back on and call this, call this a day. Well, that's it, guys. I'm, that's about as far down as I plan to take it. This thing here, there's no need to tear it apart. Not much to it. Everything looks to be good. It's got a little rust down in here, but... Uh, that's about it. There's no rubber seals that uh, there's one. No, that's plastic right there, I think. Let me look. Yeah, I think that's plastic. So there's no really no rubber seals or anything down in there except for this one right here. And it looks to be in pretty good shape. Anyway, so the question is, you know, can we reuse it? Don't know. Can we rebuild it? I don't think I can get a rebuild kit. And uh, would we know how to put it back together? Hadn't really thought about that part. We'll think about that later. Let's see if we can find a rebuild kit. If not, we'll we'll just immediately jump to plan B. By the way, I've got to get all this crap off of here. Uh, tomorrow around 11 o'clock, our, our good buddy Tom, Sky Carl's long-lost brother, will be back again to be stroking and poking on his dad's radio. And this is where he does it. It's kind of nice to have a guy, you know, around town that... His wife works during the day, Tom's uh, retired, and he gets to come over here for a couple hours, you know, two, three hours, two, three times a week. It's kind of nice, you know, to have somebody to shoot the breeze with and, uh, you know, kind of teach them what I know, which isn't very much, but I teach them what I can, you know. I have my way of doing things a lot different than most people, but uh, he's a good fella, he really is. Tell you what, I have decided to try to put this baby back together clean it up, de-rust it, 
let's put it back together. Everything looks fine. I mean, the rubber gaskets and everything are pliable and nice and flexible. No cracks, no breaks. They practically look brand new. And same with this gasket here. This is the diaphragm itself. This thing is in perfect condition. Not a thing wrong with it. Not a crack, not a break, not a split, not a hole. Nothing at all. Looks very good, just a little dirty. And uh, same with this, which is basically just a dust boot, I think. This thing here just keeps, allows it to stay in the center of the hole and keep dirt out also. A lot of de-rusting, uh, this down here, we can de-rust everything here. This thing here has got quite a bit of rust in it. We can, we can do these kinds of things, there's nothing to it. And uh, I can get a new one of these. And that plastic thing that uh, came apart in an earlier video that fits on the, uh, up against the uh, this right here. I can even get a new one of those, the one that had that foam rubber in it to let the air in. I can even buy one of those on Thunderbird headquarters. So I, I do want to get a new one of these. This thing just spins around too much to my liking. It should be a lot tighter than that. And this thing here, nothing wrong with it. Not a thing, a little bit of rust, a little bit of dirt. I think we can clean it up. So that's what we're gonna be doing on and off. I'm gonna be working on it. It's not gonna be a major project. Uh, the ring, nothing to it. I bought a new bolt, a new long bolt today for it to draw the two pieces together. <clears throat> that one that I had to cut out, got that replaced already. And uh, this here, soak that in a little bit of vinegar. I bet that will clean right up. Repaint this stuff. You know, what have we got to lose? You know, uh, after speaking with Brendan, uh, I told you already, this is a Midland brake booster. He thinks that we can actually, uh, it costs so much to replace one of these, and it's just so expensive because there's not that many. But he thinks we might be able to, if need be, replace it with a Bendix. Some of those cars had Bendix brake boosters on them. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to try to clean it up and try to get it as close to this right here if possible. Uh, you know, make it look nice. Don't know if we're going to make it. But anyway, I want to get this video uploaded so everybody saw exactly what was inside this booster. And then just sort of wish me luck. I think I can even buy one of these little dog paw rods that might have a new... I think they sell these on Thunderbird headquarters also. It needs a new one of those plastic things around here to hold it in. But it's not that critical. It's just there to keep it from falling out. And uh, we can put an O-ring around it. I've got several of those. We'll come up with something. But that's about it, okay? Uh, word to the wise if you ever do take one of these apart. Don't bang on it too much. You might break that plastic thing like I did. I had no idea there was a plastic thing up there. So if that's the only damage we did in the process, we're in good shape. So I'll tell you what, what I'm going to do is right, I'm just going to say Merry Christmas to everybody. I may put up one more video before the end of the year or before Christmas even. And uh, we'll see you all next time. This is John.